All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Our next talk is SDLC Nightmares, Defeating Secure Code Review, H or GPT Hallucination, with Julo and April. Hello. Hello, my name is Zilong, and uh, I gr just graduated from the Pennsylvania State University last year, and now I'm working at the security engineering industry. And uh, uh, my research interest is focused on uh, applied deep learning in cybersecurity. And I'm April, a uh, Carnegie Mellon University graduate, and currently a security engineer as well. A uh, fun fact about me is I learn and apply my infosec knowledge during writing science fictions. Okay, let's get started. Uh, as most of us might have noticed, nowadays large language models have been playing an increasingly important role in our daily work and lives. Today we'll discuss how LMs can be applied to security code analysis and evaluate their reliability in understanding program logic. Uh, overview of our talk today, first we'll introduce LLMs and their strengths in SDLC, then we'll uncover their limitations through an experiment. Based on our findings, we'll further discuss the root causes and their other related issues. Finally, we'll summarize key takeaways on how to better utilize LMs in our work. So first of all, what is large language model? Basically, LM is advanced mo machine learning models that understand and generate human-like text uh, by learning from fast data sets. They use deep learning, especially uh, transformer architectures to predict the most probable word in a sentence. For example, in this figure, it estimates a 91% probability that wor the word blue follows the phrase the color of the sky is. LMs generate coherent and contextually appropriate text, enabling tasks like answering questions, uh, translation, and our topic today, code analysis. Now, let's talk about SDLC. A typical software development lifecycle involves various stages where LM can significantly assist. By understanding semantics and recognizing patterns, LMs can uh, comprehend natural language and analyze code, performing tasks, tasks like code generation, test case creation, and also documentation. From a security perspective, they also help with threat modeling and identifying vulnerabilities, ultimately boosting the efficiency and uh, quality throughout the SDLC. However, LMs can make mistakes. Here are two famous examples. When Google introduced their chatbot BART, it made a factual error during its very first demo. Another instance involved ChatGPT, which confidently asserted that 9.11 is greater than 9.9, .9, a mistake even an elementary student would recognize. These errors stem from their tendency to state incorrect information as facts. LMs often hallucinate, like what I do every time before sleeping or conceiving a science fiction story. They tend to make up information because they are essentially autocomplete system based on probability rather than facts. Now, let's see their performance in code analysis. Before diving into the experiment, let's first take a closer look at the code itself. Technically, source code is a sequence of tokens consisting of three types keywords, operators, and user-defined names. Keywords and operators are defined by the specification of each programming language, and they control the actual logic flow of the program execution. So we categorize them as logical features. Meanwhile, user-defined names, annotations, and comments, which don't influence the program flow once it's compiled, 
are categorized as little features. So our goal for the experiment is to determine what types of features in the code LMs can actually learn and process. We'll mask the little features by replacing the changeable names that don't affect the program flow, and then use the LM to perform code analysis tasks on this modified code. By evaluating the performance, we'll assess whether LM can effectively process the logical features when little features are absent or even misleading. To conceal the literal features, we'll adopt three kinds of anonymization. So here is an example of the bubble sort function in Java. And the first anonymization is for function name. So here we can replace the bubble sort string with our customized string. And the second one is for variable names. Two examples here is the begin and end, which we can replace with our strings. And the last one is the method invocation name. Here we have a function pret as one of the arguments for the bubble sort function. So we can replace the invocation name with our customized stream. Meanwhile, to understand how little features affect LM comprehension, we also use two name replacement strategies. The first one is just replacing it with some randomly generated Rated string, while the second one is shuffling the names with other, other meaningful names from the code, making it more misleading for users, for readers, sorry. So after the row features are concealed, the LLM perform two main tasks related to code analysis. The first one is code clone detection, which identifies and measures the similarity between different code fragments to see if they generate the same result when given the same input. The second one is code search, where it tries to retrieve the code fragment from a larger code corpus that closely match a developer's intent, which is expressed in natural language as the input. So here are the results we got. It shows that anonymizing names significantly decreases model performance, especially when we replace all three kinds of names. In the code search task, we also noticed that anonymizing master definition name causes more degradation than anonymizing master invocation name, indicating a stronger correlation between the master definition name and their purpose. As for different languages, anonymizing a single attribute affects Python more, but changing all naming attributes impacts Java the most, probably because the verbosity and the structure in Java code that can mitigate partial anonymization are fully disrupted. Compared to the code clone detection task, the performance degradation is more pronounced in code search task, since well-defined variable and method names are crucial for relating the code snippet to its descriptive purpose. So overall, the results clearly show that while logical features are what matters for program to execute, what LMs processed are mostly the little features from the code. Now I'll hand it over to Dr. Zhilong to discuss the reasons and possible solutions. OK. So uh, let's discuss some root cause for the misleading names and comments in the code. Uh, basically, uh, we just observed three uh, types of the root cause for these misleading names and comments. And uh, they are malicious code committers and outdated comments and better coding practice. Malicious code contributor can contribute some malicious code to the uh, open source projects. And uh, to avoid uh, being detected by the code reviewers, and uh, they usually can change the naming to some misleading names to avoid being detected by the code reviewer. 
Secondly, in software development programs, uh, often change, uh, frequently up the, uh, update their code to uh, f uh, fix some bugs or add some new features. Uh, well, the comments corresponding to the code may not be uh, updated in time. Uh, in this example, uh, partial code was removed during a new commit, and however, the corresponding comment was not removed uh, accordingly. Comments that are not updated can cause inconsist inconsistency with the code, and we call them outdated comments. And outdated comments can mislead in the light learning model during code analysis. Also, in better coding practice, confusing verbal names uh, and uh, misleading verbal names uh, uh, could be given by even a benign programmer and developer, uh, which can mislead in the code review uh, too. So, uh, in next, uh, we are going to cover some other issues uh, when we use the uh, light language model to do the code analysis. Besides the aforementioned uh, uh, limitation, we also observe uh, uh, two limitations. The first one is uh, uh, lack of contest, and the second one is the diverse performance uh, on different program language. We will show the detail. Most light long model can only handle a sequence of a limited length. For example, uh, GPT-3 can handle a sequence uh, with 2,048 uh, tokens at most. And GPT-4 can handle 32,000 tokens at most. However, the code for even small projects uh, can have a thousand lines of code. And each line of code contains uh, usually more than 10 tokens. Therefore, the light long model cannot consume all the code at once, which will lead to lack of contest issue. Let's show through this figure. Let's uh, we have a big project here uh, showing this figure, and let's uh, consider a contest of the light long model uh, through this uh, yellow, uh, not yellow, it's a blue, blue box. And uh, when we use the uh, light long model to analyze this uh, whole project, uh, so we need to analyze the part of them individually. So, in, based on our observation, in most cases, uh, the light language model is used to analyze each function individually, and it cannot have a big picture of the whole project. So, uh, we actually uh, have written an ARX and we preprint to dive into these problems. We uh, also propose some solution to solve this problem. And, uh, for people who are interested in the uh, details, can read this uh, ARX that we preprint. Also, we observe that light long model has uh, uh, has a diverse performance across different program language, and the different light long model and also have a different strengths across different program language. And we did a quick experiment to evaluate the light language model's ability uh, to infer the program logic uh, on two program language. And the result is shown in the table here. We can observe that uh, the GPT 3.5 has uh, shown the best results on PHP and Go. However, the Germany can uh, show the best results on PHP and Python. Okay, so uh, next we will discuss some how to avoid this issue in using light long model for code analysis. So we start from some ad hoc solutions and uh, if the code is uh, 
committed by the trusted developer, we should expect them to improve the quality of the name convention. And, uh, and if the code is committed by some untrusted uh, developer, and we should uh, pay special attention in case the large long model is uh, folded by the malicious code committer, which it can easily achieve based on our uh, experiments. And if, for example, we could deploy some naming logic in constancy detection uh, and use it to detect the, the inconsistency before we perform the code review. However, so to really solve this problem, we believe that uh, uh, we need to uh, change the model a little bit uh, to specifically for the code analysis. And the current popular pre-training task for, for the large learning model, as far as we know, is the mask token prediction. Uh, in mask token prediction task, it masks off some tokens in the sequence. Here, if I take this as example, and uh, it masks off some, some Z tokens uh, uh, from its uh, sequence and uh, use the uh, um, neural network to predict this token. And this is uh, how current light long model is trained, um, as far as we know. And uh, the mask uh, token prediction task uh, uh, mainly focus on the literal feature uh, when applied the, the, uh, it to the source code analysis. But if we apply this model to the neural, neural, uh, neural language, uh, NLP, it's okay because it does not have too much of the logic features. But uh, for the source code, we have a lot of the logic features. So to really solve this problem, uh, we, we think that uh, we need to, uh, custom, to, to add some more pre-training task to train a, uh, a new, uh, a large program language model. Uh, which uh, we, uh, should, uh, we should add some logic feature prediction tasks so that it can better capture the logic feature, not the literal feature. Because as we should uh, rely on too much on the literal feature, we will result on resulting in uh, some issues as we have demonstrated in the experiments. So for the audience who are interested in the details of this talk, uh, you can refer to this uh, ARX that we preprint pre for more details. And uh, here is our contact information. And uh, that's all of our talk.